I think that the young audience will still go to the cinema in 10 years, um, definitely, but not only the cinemas. I think that uh, the young audience will look both in the cinema, look at uh, films and series both in the cinema and uh, on the internet, on HBO and Netflix and uh, YouTube and everywhere. So. But I don't think it will die out because it's such a... The feeling of a good film and how it can overwhelm you is different in the cinema, for me, uh, at least. With the sound and the music and, uh, and also that you can't stop the film. You watch the whole film through. But when you sit with your computer, you can go uh, away for a while and make a phone call or uh, take a coffee break and so on. And then you interrupt the experience somehow. So, yeah, I prefer cinema. So, I think that uh, after 10 years, it will be still cinemas and people will going on cinemas because it's like a something... Of course, you can see film in your uh, computer, in your laptop, in TV, I don't know, but still it's something else when you're sitting in the... Uh, a, a big, and you're watching in a big screen, great movie, I think. It will be always. It's like Around me, most of my friends, my closest friends are cinephiles. So they're going in cinemas and also they are watching illegal way movies in computer. So this is that if you are cinephile, you need like a uh, watch old time movies. Uh, you're going, they're going in cinemas. They're watching in uh, her computers. I don't know. It's like a, as everyone. I don't, I don't know what is happening in non cinephile circles. To say honestly, but around me there are people who love cinemas, who love movies. So they are watching in cinemas. I think that in ten years from now, uh, people and the young audiences will go to uh, theaters because, um, I mean, it is a specific experience and I think there will always be uh, a demand for, you know, the full-on experience of uh, sound and vision and, uh, and uh, the cinematic experience. Uh, uh, definitely a lot of it is going to just move on to, um, you know, uh, you know the, the phones and, and home co consumption. But it's, it's, a, it's a different experience and um, and uh, yeah, the theatre has the social aspect as well, and uh, yeah, I think it's, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, of course it's going to survive. I'm quite sure that ten years from now, um, young people will still see movies, because if a movie is good, it speaks about uh, real problems, it speaks about your generation, it speaks about the world uh, we live in. So I can see the reason why people wouldn't go and watch it because it's important, it's a, it's a way how to, um, what's the English word, to, to clean yourself, to, to, you know, like, it has this catharsic, movies have a catharsic way of um, telling the truth or telling the fairy tale or, or for some people telling the lie, whatever you want to hear. So I think movies won't die because the stories are forever. The, uh. I think uh, it's a very interesting question because young people are not going to the cinema as much as they used to. In Romania we have a big issue around cinemas, we don't have enough cinemas, we have cinemas only in big cities and most young people prefer watching at home, like on the laptop or anything. So I hope that people will still go to the cinema because it's a beautiful thing, thing and a beautiful experience and everything. But I really doubt it. I think movies will also become maybe smaller cinemas and maybe different kinds of things, not like the going to the mall to see a film. So I'm, I hope it, people will go to the cinema, but I'm not sure. Uh, my opinion about traditional cinema is that I really like traditional cinema. I really like the fact that you're going to the cinema and see a film. I'm, not, I'm also not a very big fan of Netflix actually uh, well I have it so I watch it sometimes but um, yeah, I really like art house films and I really like that to see them on the big screen and um, so I really hope <laughs> that people still visiting uh, in the cinema um, and actually I don't think it's going to end in, in 10 years that's that would be very fast though so 
hopefully not. <laughs> uh, the traditional kind of guy that really want that the people going to the cinema. Uh, watching a film on a television is way different than watching it in a, in a cinema. Um, uh, for instance, I made a film in total shots, in very big total shots, in plan seconds. Uh, and that you don't want it to f see that film uh, on the television, then it's going to be a little bit boring. You really need, you really need the big screen to to get the full experience and to understand the film. Uh, so I think that, yeah, I, I I hope that people will go to the cinema, and I hope that I can make films about with the, with a um, sort sort of urgency that it's might be interesting for uh, everybody. Um, I'm also interested in, in, in social themes um, and I think that's, yeah, I hope that's interesting for everybody. So, yeah, I don't have a way, I, I of course, VOD, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility, but um, first I really want to see my own film on the big screen. <laughs> I really hope that even the young audience would go to cinema in the future. Um, for me, uh, the new ways of uh, presenting cinema, for example, like VOD or, or even like new medias like uh, VR, virtual reality and stuff. It's not, not an option for me. I'm in this way a bit old fashioned. I think the experience in the cinema, uh, in the dark room with all the other people is the most intensive. So I really hope that it will go on and continue even after I, even in 10 years from now? In my opinion, um, uh, cinema theaters will uh, uh, continue to persist because uh, it's not just the uh, storylines that we get from the films, it's the experience and it's a spiritual experience when you gather together in a dark room and you all uh, for two hours or, or whatever amount of time you just uh, all join in uh, experiencing something which is the screen, which is the image, which is the film. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, cinemas uh, won't disappear. Uh, I have a feeling that young people do not uh, uh, necessarily understand why we need cinema theaters and why we need to watch films in, uh, in uh, cinema or when we can just download them and watch them on a small screen. But. Uh, uh, I think this attitude is just uh, robbing <laughs> these young people from the full experience, uh, from the life-changing experience, uh, uh, which... Uh, uh, personally, for me, I fell in love with films because I uh, was uh, watching them on the big screen. Uh, I uh, went to work in the film festival and, uh, and then I watched the retrospectives of uh, Nouvelle Vague and uh, then I realized I haven't actually seen uh, cinema, real cinema before. So, uh, and it was life changing and career changing uh, for me to go <laughs> watch movies on the big screen. So uh, I think it shouldn't be underestimated and because cinema theaters offer the experience that uh, no small screen uh, will ever can. <laughs> I think that young audience will continue to go to cinema. Um, in Slovakia, it's uh, uh, our cinema. The, our cinema started like 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. So we started like really fresh, and we started like from the bottom. That means that now we are building like a connection with the audience. That means that this year, and for example, last year was popular for the audience. Finally, uh, Slovak audience went to see Slovak films, which is great, because until then they were like forcing only the uh, Hollywood films and films from abroad. So now I think it's, it's going to be better and better. I think it will be divided, really divided. I think that uh, the, um, the really um, challenge Challenging stories are maybe told in TV series actually because people are so used to Netflix and HBO and and uh, and to watch TV like that. So I think uh, that's a great place to to have a, like a really challenging stories and you know um, uh, interesting characters. And in films, younger people are searching for more like a big show nowadays. 
So, but I think there will be like a different audiences, so it will be more divided. So, and I'm sure that the art house film is going to survive also, so I'm not worried at all, because I see that people are like watching more drama than ever, actually. So there will be like a different audiences, different places, different way, ways to, uh, to watch films. But I don't know, I don't really see a big difference between uh, good TV series and, and films. Uh, the, the film that I did now, Schoolyard Blues, uh, was my graduation film from Stockholm Academy of Dramatic Arts uh, in Sweden. And so it's funded by the school, but it's also funded by the Swedish Film Institute. Since it's uh, mass, my, master, uh, my graduation film from the master program, I could also apply uh, national funding. So it has both. Uh, and now it's out on festivals and the Swedish Film Institute's festival uh, distributor is handling um, the film, so he has the strategies for it and how to get it out for film festivals. And also, it's, since it's uh, young children in both of the leads, a uh, seven-year-old and an eleven-year-old, I also wanted to uh, go out in schools because it uh, takes up uh, themes about bullying and violence and shame about being bullied and so on. So it will go out in schools in Sweden as well. Yeah, uh, my film was financed by Georgian National Film Center. So it's good chance when you, in your country have an organization like this. Uh, but I really don't know how it will be after several years, how it will change, because it's became more difficult uh, to find the financial because I don't know. Uh, the festivals is good, good option. Uh, these industry meetings, these uh, development projects. But I don't know. Somehow, because of uh, new technology, you can take your own camera and go without make films without money. Like a Dennis Cote, who was with us in this festival, he's making without money, with very small money, perfect, cool movies. So it depends on person also what he or she wants to do. It depends, it's up to you what kind of movie you want to do. If you really want to do a uh, good movie, you will do without money and with money also, I don't know. But I'm not expert on it, to say honestly. I'm not thinking about how can I find money. I'm thinking more about script, more about story. And then I have a really good producer and she's helping me, so I don't have b much information of, uh, about it. Yeah, before film school, I um, uh, financed uh, uh, a, a short film uh, myself uh, and with uh, some uh, a complimentary uh, additional funding from a private, uh, from a private fund uh, supporting women in the arts, uh, not a nationally run uh, um, support system. But uh, being, coming uh, from uh, Scandinavia, uh, from the north, uh, there are uh, national uh, Film funds and uh, and uh, and, we, and uh, those uh, tra traditional ways to to try and fund a, a project, but uh, that um, but uh, in 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 some cases that is maybe not uh, uh, it, it doesn't maybe work out or it is maybe not the right for the uh, for the project. I guess all of us uh, directors in the Future Frames program participating here. Uh, are, come from countries where there is a, a, a national uh, support system uh, to uh, the films, and uh, and there is a, a, a good reason why, and uh, th this is done done in, the, in this way, and uh, it, it's a very privileged situation to to come from a country that has such uh, respect for uh, the film as an art form. My film is a master degree film, so it was financed by our school with the um, cooperation of our national television. Um, so uh, it, it has just started its way. It was um, uh, premiered at our national um, uh, film festival. So I, I don't know if it will have the opportunity to get to the people because uh, it's not um, uh, broadcast so much in Slovenia. Um, but I, I definitely hope that it reaches people, that's why we, we make films, don't we? <laughs>
but um, for the future I haven't uh, thought about it through because at, at the moment I'm still at the beginning of the film, at the idea and writing a screenplay, so I haven't thought about uh, how to get financed yet. I'm trying to take one step at a time because if you look at it big picture it's kind of scary when you're just beginning your way and you don't know anyone, you don't even know how, 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 how things go in this world. So I, I haven't thought about it so much. This film, which uh, is in future frames, was financed by the National Fund, Romanian National Fund of Cinematography, uh, CNC in Romanian. And uh, so we had money from the state to make a movie. But I also made movies on uh, our uh, university's money and also independent movies with my own money. My own money, actually, not that much money, but a lot of uh, relationships and, okay, can you give me something, can you give me something? So, um, this time I got money from the National Fund, but uh, I am very interested in independent cinema. So, I've never tried a crowdfunding system, but I think I would try it. And I think I also would like to go to private investors and things like this, just to Okay, low-budget movies, but just to get some money and try to do independent things because I love working independently and not depending on uh, loads of things and uh, people and production companies and things like this. So I'm a big fan, but I've only tried individual independent production, not funding or crowdfunding. Mm, well, we were able to get some financing from the Film Academy, from the Film Academy in Amsterdam. Um, we made the film on the Film Academy, so uh, and we also getting a part from a TV channel, a Dutch TV channel. But the film is about um, a province in Groningen, in the north of uh, Holland. So we were able to get some money from the from the province of Groningen, and we also did some crowdfunding. So by all that parts together, we were able to uh, to uh, shoot the film. Mm, the financing is uh, always really <laughs> important and a uh, good question. Uh, the thing is that anytime it's possible to finance the film, let's say a normal way to to uh, get together budget from film school in terms of like student film, combine it with, for example, a national film fund or maybe some mm, prize money from festivals. That f was the case of. of my film that I'm presenting here. It was a combination of, of uh, uh, extra money from fund, uh, money given by school and also uh, the money prize from the festival and also some extra money uh, as, as our input uh, to the film. Uh, for me, for example, crowdfunding would be like a last option. Uh, I think it happens a lot right now when, when uh, something gets wrong then you have to ask for help the public. Uh, I would prefer to stay at this uh, at this previous um, uh, at this previous normal way of, of like financing by fund and uh, and producing companies. Seven awkward sex scenes uh, was uh, my graduation film, so it was a student film, and we got a uh, little money from the government, like thousand euros or so. But that was the, that's the, all the money we got. Uh, so basically, I could say that the film was funded by the enthusiasm of the crew and the cast and everyone uh, involved. Uh, so. Uh, but I have considered that uh, crowd crowdfunding option because if you make like uh, low budget films with skeleton crew, then you don't need that much money, and maybe uh, crowd crowdfunding could uh, help in that uh, respect. Uh, uh, I, I think this is one of the new uh, ways how to finance uh, that uh, you don't just. Um, uh, you don't depend on uh, s just uh, several people who sit somewhere in the panel who gives you money, but you depend on the love of people if you can uh, if you can uh, obtain it. <laughs> if uh, you prove uh, uh, that uh, you should be loved, <laughs> then <laughs> they would uh, support you. And uh, and uh, in in that situation, you also get the mental support, not only the money, because uh, people have voted with your money. So I, I think it is uh, one. It, it is a very promising option that uh, the crowdfunding is uh, so popular right now. Mm, because my film is a student film, we didn't have much money from school. Then that, that means that we had to apply for some grants, 
and we got them only because the project was well prepared. But I know that many of my classmates, they didn't get any money. So in Slovakia, it's really difficult to finance short films. It's, it's good for uh, feature films, but short films are not that popular. So that means that, um, for example, professional short films, not school films, are not really popular in Slovakia. N nobody makes them. So uh, we have some grants, we have some Slovak audiovisual, audiovisual fund, and also there are very popular co-productions. And the most popular co-production is with uh, Czech Republic, which is close and the market is like the same. Well, um, this film was very different from, uh, from many others because uh, it, uh, it, uh, most of it happens in one room between two actors. So it's a very cheap film <laughs> to make in a way. Uh, well, there are flashbacks, so we have uh, three locations, but still, uh, still, it's kind of a simple in in a form. So, so it was we could we were able to choose that if we wanted to like a, um, like a, uh, it fully funded, then it would have been more than a year, because you know funding is always slow and you have to negotiate, etc. But then we decided not to do that, so we took just a little bit of money and which we could get from the school and we just made it with that very little money because it was so deliberating not to have to talk about money almost at all. So I thought that well this is the last uh, film I'm going to do in school so I'm just going to enjoy it you know I, so I didn't want it to be a, a really big production. Yeah, I think uh, VOD is of course really interesting and you know it's already here so that's uh, of course important but this uh, crowdfunding, I don't know, it works if you already have people who are interested in your film or, your, you, you, know, or you as a filmmaker or if the film is about the topic that some, you know, that, that some people are already uh, into. So, so you, if you just start, a, you know, if I put a, a project in, in, um, uh, in some uh, crowd uh, funding platform that after the reunion, which is the title of my film, and please uh, donate some money or be part of it, people would go, why? You know, there are like millions of short films. But if, if there is something that they really want to see, so then it works really well. For example, my friend went, made a uh, um, documentary about hobby horse riding, which is a big phenomenon in Finland. It's not only for kids, it's for adults as well. And there is a huge crowd really uh, doing hobby horse riding. So, so it was very different from the, from the beginning because there, yeah, it was not actually crowdfunded, but it, it could have been because, you know, there was the audience already, the people who really wanted her to make the film. So in that case, or like Iron Sky, these huge films, there are fans, fans who are really waiting for those films. So, yeah.